take a look at some NBA teams who were close to winning at the championship last year but came up just short. So we're going to ask our panelists, what is going, what is it going to take to get these teams over the hump in a segment we're calling The Missing Link? So guys, we're going to start with the Cavaliers. They fell to the Warriors in the finals and came up just two games short of the championship last season. What or who is the Cavs' missing link? So for the Cavs, I'm going to go with a consistent shooter to help with some scoring balance and also spacing around LeBron James. There was a lot on his shoulders in the finals. And when Kyrie Irving went down, you lost your most consistent three-point shooter. And then you've got J.R. Smith, who at best is streaky. You don't have proven shooters in Iman or Iman Shumpert or Adela Vadova. And then you really see the importance now in Kevin Love and his shooting ability, getting him back to help space the floor there. Now, another way to space the floor that I thought was interesting, too, I covered the, the Warriors this season, and Andrew Bogut said to me, Tristan Thompson spaces the floor. Why? Because he crashes the glass so hard. So he, he goes so hard every single time that Bogut said the key is, I can't let him be in open space because then I'll never be able to box him out. I got to keep contact, which means I got to stay close, which means I'm defending him like a three-point shooter. Bogut said he actually had to defend Tristan Thompson the same way he would defend Kevin Love as a shooter because of Thompson's offensive rebounding ability. So as long as you can help space the court and clear it out and, get, and help it for other people, I think that's what the Cavs need. Uh, this is so easy to me. I mean, listen, they need a healthy Kyrie Irving. <laughs> yeah, Kyrie Irving. I think right now we're talking about them winning the title instead of the team you cover, the Golden State Warriors. I think they would have still won. Maybe. I mean, they may have, but we'll listen. We'll never know. What Kyrie does is he takes so much. You said they need a shooter. They need a score. That's Kyrie. That's what he does. He can get to the basket whenever he wants. He was never healthy throughout really the entire playoffs. And we didn't see it. They were able to get there. They were able to put some pressure, uh, you know, on Golden State, even without having Kevin Love. I mean, I don't even think Kevin Love losing him is going to matter that much. They're much better defensively without Kevin Love in the lineup. Let's face it, Tristan Thompson, yep. much, I mean, not even close. Mozgov, rim protector. Mozgov, all of it. But Kyrie Irving is a key here. If he comes in again, he takes the pressure off. He can make plays. He can let LeBron be more of a facilitator. At the end of the game, we all knew every single play, give the ball to LeBron. They couldn't even get it to him half the time until there was seven, eight in the shot clock. And he's taking contested shots that he won't have to take when, when Kyrie's out in the court. So, yeah. honestly, I, we could talk about all the other things. <laughs> you know, black learning for another year and getting better and... and coaching over here, but it's, it's Kyrie. Yeah. I think David Blatt is hoping he's not missing as a part of this link <laughs> with the Cleveland Cavaliers, but story to be told with that one. For me, it's a backup small forward because, to your point about LeBron James, you can't continue to have him play 40-plus minutes. That, that's just not going to fly where he's going to have enough when the playoffs roll around at the end of game situations. I like this second-round pick, Sir Dominic Pointer out of St. John's, who can provide that relief. He can defend like a little bit. Oh, well, he has the best <laughs> name in the draft. Sir Dominic Pointer. You know, not, 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 not King, but Sir Dominic <laughs> Dominic point. I like that name. I just think having that relief at the backup small forward situation because Kyrie Irving is going to be healthy. I like the love Tristan Thompson. They're going to resign him. Timothy Mozgov was better than I thought he was going to be. I thought he was going to be good coming from Denver. I didn't foresee what he was able to do, and I think he's going to work on his offensive game to alleviate a lot of stress in the Cleveland Cavaliers. Whatever's going to happen between Blatt and LeBron, you know what? The future's going to take care of that, but if you can provide some relief at small forward this way, when he goes down, a guy will come in and not just decorate the court or hold minutes until LeBron gets back out there. He's going to be productive when he's out there. Maybe Sir Dominic Pointer can do that, but they're able to find that either with him or in free agency. That's going to be a boon to the Cleveland Cavaliers. You're, you're a big Sir Dominic Pointer fan. <laughs> yeah. by the way. Here's wow. why. Because here's why. <laughs> Sir Dominic Pointer helping out now? We'll put it this way. They're going to need all hands on deck from that standpoint. And you don't have to worry about him coming in and say, we need you to give us 20 minutes. Hey, give us 10. They give that guy a break. I think it's we need, we need you to give LeBron his towel. <laughs> whatever he has to do, That's what whatever that mean. has to happen, and as long as we can get the name so Dominic Point <laughs> right. in the game, it's good for the Cavs. So uh, John, it's good for the country. <laughs> All right, next up, the Bulls. They fell to the Cavs in the third round. Uh, it took them to six games, though. What or who is the Bulls' missing link? I think for the Bulls, it's rejuvenation. You know, it was a lot last season with all the Thibodeau and ownership and executive drama. And then also, you've got offense from your post players which could use some new juice. Pal Gasol is talented but he's up there in age. He's 35, probably playing too many minutes. Joaquin Noah had a down year for himself last year offensively. And then also Derek Rose 
You hate to see him get hurt. You don't want to have that happen. You root for this guy so much, but his constant injuries are deflating. They, they suck the wind right out of him, out of his teammates, out of the city, out of the fan base, and it's hard, you know? So where do you get that rejuvenation from? I think you invest in Jimmy Butler. Get him back. Pay that man. He bet on himself, and he, he earned it. Yeah. And also, you've got a new head coach, which often means a fresh start. Yeah, I, I know Fred Hoiberg well, and I think he's going to be able to get this team healthy, both from a physical standpoint, because he's not going to ride him the way Tibbs did. And Listen, Joakim Noah was hurt all year. They should have shut him down two weeks before the All-Star break. They could have given him a month off, and Noah could have been healthy. He looked like he was dragging out there with the knee issues. I mean, he had every issue known to man with his, with, with his legs and knees. You know, everybody was hurt on that team at some point this year. Everybody. Gasol was kind of the last one standing. He got hurt in the playoffs. So I think Horiberg is going to understand how to bring this team together. It's just a fresh approach mm -hmm. that these players are going to love. So Hoiberg's a guy that he he could talk to him. Mm -hmm. You know, Tibbs was not a, a touchy feely guy. He just wasn't great coach. But Hoiberg will be able to communicate with the guys. And I think this team had factions in the locker room. And it's interesting because I, I know all these guys, and they're really good. Derek Rose is a great guy, but has no interest in being a leader. Zero. Jimmy Butler isn't there yet. He doesn't can't be a leader yet. And Noah is vocal. But they just have to come together, and I think Fred Hoiberg can, can really orchestrate that. I love what both of you guys said. I'm going to look at it from a basketball standpoint. They need a quality back of a point guard. Kirk Heinrich is 34 years of age. I like Aaron Brooks, but he's 30 years of age. He's like a spot guy more than anything else. If you can find that quality back of, so to alleviate a potential injury with Derrick Rose because that's your most indispensable player. Noah's their leader, no doubt about that, but that's the guy that when he's rolling, we saw at times in the playoffs last year, he didn't look like an old Derrick Rose. He looked like the old Derrick Rose, where all of a sudden he's making these fantastic plays, he's energizing his team, but they need to find somebody quality behind him. This way he's not out there all the time worrying about his knee, playing a lot of those minutes. If they can find that guy, that's going to be a big time measure for the Chicago Bulls to be yeah. successful. And from Chicago to LA, the Clippers were up three games to one against the Rockets in the second round of the playoffs and then blew it, losing in seven games. What or who is the missing link for the Clippers? Clippers need some depth because after you saw them beat the Spurs, the defending champs at the time, you thought, oh man, this is for real. It was a legacy type game for Chris Paul with the bad hamstring, knocking down that off the backboard shot. And you said, God, they're going to give the Warriors trouble. This is it. But then they just collapsed. They ran out of steam. They burnt out against the Rockets. You didn't beat the Spurs to do this against the Rockets. And, and I think that you stay with the core because Jordan, Griffin, and Paul, they are elite. So now you got to get serious about, about guys that can come in and, and produce in spurts. you got to get serious about the middle of the bench. No, you're absolutely right. They need guys that can come off the bench that can help. I also, there's something missing there chemistry-wise. I can't put my finger on it, but when you've got CP, you've got, you know, Jordan protecting the rim. You've got Blake, who's gotten so much mm, better. Gosh. I mean, this was a guy that really wasn't very skilled when he came in, you know, mm -hmm. the NBA, came out of college at Oklahoma. And I, there's something missing there. And Doc Rivers is pretty good at managing people and managing players. But I just think there's got to be more cohesion with the Clippers. They have the talent. They don't have the bench. But sometimes you get away without, you know, having a great bench when you've got a great starting unit. But I just, I can't put my finger on it completely. I just think there's something missing. Is it like a lack of leadership or? Um, yeah, no, I think CP, you know, Chris yeah. Paul is a pretty good leader and Blake's, you know, Blake's coming, he's still young. He's trying to figure it out, DeAndre's DeAndre. I, I think, again, maybe they need another guy too, that uh, another sure. wing that can really take some of the pressure off those guys. Yeah. Right. I think scoring depth in the front line. I think that's where that has to come from because when, when their big guys come in, whether it's Glenn, Big Baby Davis, he tries hard, but at a certain point, those days him coming out the bench getting 10, 12 points a game like he did in Boston, those days are over as far as I'm concerned with the Clippers. Long, long gone. Blake Griffin was so good. He was like a human triple double at times in the playoffs. Whatever they needed him to do, right? just unbelievable how so each and watch. every year he's done something different. When you say, my goodness, I didn't think he had that in him. My goodness, mm -hmm. I didn't think he was able to do something like that. They need somebody else where they bring that guy. They need a Jamal Crawford on the front line. When Jamal Crawford comes in the game, Doc Rivers says, don't worry about anything, just put the ball in the hole. I'd love to be that guy. Oh, absolutely. Green light, yeah. go. If you tell me that the ball can go up and I don't have to worry about any consequences absolutely. or repercussions, that ball is going up on the bench as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> they need that kind of guy on the front line to really alleviate what Blake Griffin continues to be able to do will only expand his You game. know what else they need? DeAndre Jordan to go learn from Rick Barry. 
how to shoot free throws. Yeah. Go shoot them underhand. Brent Barry, John Barry, <laughs> any Barry. Any find Barry. that Barry Manilow. Barry. I don't care. We got find, Barry here. Find any Barry. Yeah, find any Barry that can make that work to make him make free throws. Well, lastly, James Harden and the Houston Rockets lost to the Warriors in the Western Conference Finals. What or who is the missing link in Houston? Rockets need a playmaker. They really miss Patrick Beverly when he was out with injury. Jason Terry is serviceable, but he's up there in age. And you saw in the finals, with I mean, in the playoffs with the Warriors, uh, Harden has 13 turnovers. The ball's in his hands too much. You're asking so much of a very capable player. Get a playmaker who can create easier shots for Harden and Dwight Howard. Yeah, ditto. I mean, Patrick Beverly's great defensively. He's a bulldog, but I think they need an upgrade over Patrick Beverly in terms of a high-level point guard if they can do it. Uh, they got Sam Decker, a steal at 18 in, in this draft, uh, but he doesn't fit their biggest need, which is a point guard. What you two said. Exactly. <laughs> That's what they need because James Harden, you can't have him as Jamel Hill on his or hers like to say, part of DTM doing too much. He does enough as it is, and I thought he should have got more votes for MVP to make that a closer race between Steph Curry, Golden State, and himself. But yeah, Patrick Beverly, he's an off the ball guy that's a dogged defender. Jason Terry's 37 years of age. You can't count on that. He was never that kind of point guard playmaker. Anyway, you need that guy that when James Harden can say, oh, you can dribble the ball? More than twice? <laughs> Fine. Right. Here you go. This way in the fourth quarter, he's stronger, he's more effective, and he can be that playmaker, not the one we saw having 13 turnovers in a closeout game versus Golden State. Well, we are going to get back to the newcomers. Towns goes number one, and Okafor goes number three. But will Okafor be the better pro? We'll compare the two big men when we come back. First Take is brought to you by Firestone. Whatever you drive, drive a Firestone. Well, we asked you earlier in the show, will the Knicks regret taking Chris Porzingis with the fourth overall pick? Surprising results here. 51% say yes, 49% say no. Really? Now that we know this. <laughs> yeah, it really is. So uh, it's time to take a look at which teams were winners and which teams were losers in this year's draft. Each of the panelists will give us their choices, and we'll start with the winners. Ross. Uh, my winner, the Lakers. You know, they, they got D'Angelo Russell, they have a point guard for the future, someone, an heir apparent uh, to Kobe Bryant, and they can address all of their bigger post player needs, big time player coming in and free agency. So they got everything they needed there, and also they picked up Anthony Brown out of uh, Stanford, shoot. which is, I think is a very nice catch. A 3 and D player, he can help stretch the court. Loser, I'm going to say Julia Okafor. Simply because he could have been Poor a number guy. one draft pick. <laughs> and there's money to be made in being number one. And storylines to be told. And then he ends up dropping to Philly, where it's a losing culture. There's a glut of post players, question marks. The game plan is not that clear. And it's, it's just, I think it was tough on him. All right, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to rattle off a few winners real quick here. I'm going to go with D'Angelo Russell as a winner. He's in L.A. He's got the ball in his hands. Uh, he plays with Kobe and learns with Kobe. Uh, to me, the Miami Heat. You get Justice Winslow at 10. That's an absolute steal. He's going to be a great piece. Tough, versatile. Uh, he'll help kind of keep that culture going. Uh, I like Kelly Oubre in Washington. They've traded up a few spots with Atlanta and got a very talented wing player. So those are my three winners. Losers, Okafor, totally with you there. You don't want to be in Philly. You don't want to be in that culture. Number two, the Celtics. I thought it was a bad pick. They took Terry Rozier. He duplicates what they already have. They took him at 16. It was a reach. Danny Ainge tried to trade up and couldn't. Rozier is kind of a non-shooting combo guard. Yeah, I, I want winners like players because it's hard to say teams are winners and losers after the draft, although I, I'm going to go against that with the loser part of this equation. Winners, D'Angelo Russell, I'm with you guys. Going to the Lakers, Justice Winslow sliding the heat. Sam Decker going to the Rockets at 18 when you played with James Harden and Dwight Howard. I thought he won that one. All three of those guys, losers. Knicks and Porzingis together. If I'm wrong, I'll say I'm wrong, but I don't, think I'm gonna be wrong. I don't think I'm going to be wrong on this one. So if, if, Keep if, the tape. Right. If it comes back to haunt me, fine. I'm a Knicks fan. I wanted to, but I don't think that's going to haunt me. I think the Knicks, and to your point, the Celtics, you have enough guards, and then you drafted two of them when you needed somebody else that can score on the front line on the perimeter. I thought that was a strange drafting. I like R.J. Hunter. I like R.J. Like Hunter because he could shoot it, and the Celtics need that. Yeah. But they right. And I like Terry Rozier as a player. I don't like him in Boston. Right, as a point guard. Mm -hmm. Well, guys, thanks so much for a great show. Jeff, you got in at 4 in the morning last night. Thanks for being good. here. With I'm ready to go. I got a show tonight. My my wife bought tickets for a show. I'm ready to go. What show? I don't even know. No idea. <laughs> He's a good no sport. Idea. He's a good sport. I'm just going to snort them. First take will return July 9th. We will see you then.
everyone. Great Thank job, you. Melanie. Thank Absolutely. You. Great job, Roz. Yeah. Awesome with you guys this week. Yeah, Freddie was okay. <laughs> right. <laughs>